You know, a wise man once said, Mm -hmm. never let a good crisis go to waste. Word. It's attributed to Winston Churchill, and I think before him, Machiavelli or something like that. Okay, all right. And I think we could adapt that for the current times to say, never let a good culture war moment go to waste. Oh, we would never on this show. We would never on this show, and to be fair, our contemporaries also would never let a good culture war moment go to waste. This is true. Dare I say we're reactionaries when it comes to uh, finding these culture war moments because Mm -hmm. they just, they stick out so much that we just have to grab onto them. That's right. And you know, Ben Shapiro pretends to be a film buff, Mm -hmm. and a lot of people are very excited about Dune Part 2. It was a really good movie. Fantastic movie. And Ben Shapiro reviewed Dune Part 2, and he offered a pretty basic review saying it was a good movie like the score and the the acting and stuff like that but then he got around to saying that there's not a lot of politics in the movie but the one bit of politics is actually that the movie is very pro-life see that was ben shapiro's take which is funny because first of all (laughs) dune is incredibly political yes all of it is politics and also the movie is not pro-life at all the way it maps itself onto so many conflicts like from its inception in literally 1965 all the way up until now the way that it has managed to stay relevant when it comes to geopolitical events that have happened Mm -hmm. colonization the ilk like it is an incredibly political work (laughs) and this guy said oh no well they showed a fetus Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, spoiler warning. If you haven't seen (laughs) Dune Part 2 yet, we're going to briefly talk about it and probably some stuff that happens like later on in the novel series. So, if you you don't know about it and you don't want to know about it yet, you could skip. But the idea that Ben Shapiro has is that, I guess, because there's a fetus that one of the main characters talks to consistently, um, this means that it's a pro-life movie. First of all, just having a fetus in a movie or just like somebody being pregnant with a fetus Uh doesn't imply pro-life because pro-choice isn't nobody gets to have a baby. Yeah. Like, what are we talking about? And also, if you know anything about what the fetus was saying to Jessica and what the fetus will eventually be, best argument for abortions. I'm saying. And it's also (laughs) it's also this baby was planned. Yes. (laughs) Yes. <laughs> Lady Jessica yes. chose to get pregnant with this baby when she was ready, dare I say. Yeah. Also, yeah, trying to map on like pro life arguments to this when the baby was doused in like what? The water worm of life. piss. Poison <laughs> worm piss. Was doused in, yeah, literal space poison uh, and was like flooded with the memories of all of her ancestors and future ancestors yes. or whatever. And descendants. It's, like, it's like, I guess Ben Shapiro thinks that it's saying that, oh, babies are conscious beings. No, this baby, <laughs> this baby was ripped into consciousness in a ritual that never should have been done on a pregnant woman Mm -hmm. and is considered an abomination yeah (laughs) oh my god man it's just they don't watch movies yeah and again it just implies it presupposes that being pro-choice is like being anti all births yeah when i'm pretty like the bene Gesserit are an evil organization Uh to be clear uh but they're pretty like pro-choice you know they like plan out all of the pregnancies hundreds of years in advance sure so they can control the they universe they have the ability to choose whether or not they get pregnant yeah choose what gender the baby is that's woke if you ask me <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's, yeah, that's no exactly shit. exactly because there's another another Bene Gesserit witch later on um gets pregnant and she's like yeah the child's been secured uh-huh. and it's a going to be a girl it's, it's, I, that, it's a pretty pro-choice to me. Uh-huh. <laughs> it's like trying to map on pro-choice, pro-life politics onto this movie is just kind of crazy. And trying to say that the movie is only political because, or that's the only political issue in the movie, is also crazy. Because if you don't know, uh, Paul keeps talking about this like holy war that's going to happen in his name. In the book, it's called Jihad. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's explicitly political. Like, come on now. Come and it's on like now. The, the, the whole story is, um uh, 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 what is it called? Like a criticism of white saviors. Yes. Like yeah. it is it is against charismatic leaders. Like Paul is a white savior only so far as to say that this was bad. Mm-hmm. He should never have been here. He had no right to be here. The prophecy is fake. Yeah. Yeah. And also you don't have to just take our word for it. Frank Herbert himself after he wrote the books said that Paul Atreides is a cautionary tale Mm -hmm. against charismatic leaders that lead people into war because they're charismatic. The only reason he wrote the other five fucking books was to correct the record because people thought that Paul, like the ending of Dune, was good and that Paul was <laughs> yeah. a hero and a good guy and it, pe- people really thought that Paul saying that there will be there will be jihad waged in my name a holy war that spans across the galaxy that kills billions of people and he's freaking the fuck out about oh, yeah. it was a good thing that's crazy <laughs> like, that's- 
it's nuts. And I, I'm pretty sure early on in the second book, it like opens up with him comparing himself to Hitler. And, oh, hell yeah. <laughs> and he, he says something like, um, back in those times, pretty good numbers for uh, how bad the technology was. Holy so shit. So it's like, it's explicit. Paul Atreides is not a good guy. He's the protagonist, but he's not a good guy. Mm-hmm. And that, it's explicit, right? That's the message of the book. And the fact that, um, and it's the message of the two movies that we have. Yes. The, the more recent ones. And the fact that Ben... Ben Shapiro looks at those movies and says that they're explicitly pro-life and that's the only political issue is fucking crazy to me. It is, it's just, I, I can't imagine how you just fucking, you just extract that. You gotta yeah. be sitting there in the back of your mind the whole time. How can I make this conservative? <laughs> like, he, he had to catch on, because Dune 2, basically no backlash. Yeah. Everybody oh, has it's been it's fantastic. praising this movie, yeah. as they should. Mm-hmm. Oh my god, it's beautiful. The performances are great, story's great. It's a, it's a great movie. Sat there for three hours, didn't even feel a second of it. Mm-hmm. And he had to figure out, okay, people like this thing. Now, how do I make it conservative? Yeah. He does it with literally everything. Wow. Hasn't he tried to say that Star Wars is conservative? Oh, yeah. Well, that's like the conservative line. The rebels are actually the conservatives. Oh, my God. And the God. empire is like communists or yeah, whatever. Yeah, the rebels are the uh, American establishment. <laughs> for sure, dog. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> the yeah. rebels are Reagan conservatives. Yeah. Well, and, and that's why I opened up with like never let a good culture war, ma- uh, culture war moment go to waste. Um, because anytime you get the chance, you have to try to map your politics onto whatever exists, even if it is explicitly against you Mm -hmm. as Dune is, as Star Wars is, as literally everything, uh, most other media is most great works. are. Yeah, yeah. They're, They're often cautionary tales or warning against something or, um, you know, trying to represent different political forces in a way that people usually don't think about. Like George Lucas has said many times that the rebels were uh, the Viet Cong Mm -hmm. and that the empire was the United States. And then when the prequels came out, the 2000 uh, around the two thousands, he had Anakin Skywalker quote, George Bush. Yeah. Like, what are we doing? (laughs) If you're not with me, then you're my enemy. Like you can't map conservative politics onto that and try to claim it for yourself. It's anti you. Well, actually you see the Republic should have fallen because you know, it very much was doing government overreach. Mm, yeah. So CIS true. had a point. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's rough out here. So if you see that Ben Shapiro take, don't believe him. No. I'm mean, Ben Shapiro's on a streak with these bad takes lately. Oh, I mean, every, it's like a 40 year streak, but still he's, he's still so bitter about not being able to write movies in Hollywood. Oh, yeah. Every big movie that comes out, he's either got a shit on it because it has um a, a, a trans member in the cast or just a woman like barbie or it's just yeah. about women yeah it's just about women yeah. and says has a feminist message he'll shit on that one and then he has to latch on to just uh, something that's just good mm-hmm. and say that this is conservative now that's that shit's crazy yeah and it's especially funny to me because dune is pretty anti-religious extremism mm-hmm. you know like the the plot is that paul knows that the prophecy isn't real but he's going to use it to his own ends because he wants revenge and, you know, take control and stuff like this. And he sees different futures and all that. Um, It's pretty explicitly anti-religious extremism, but Ben doesn't really comment on that. Oh my God. Absolutely. There's a, there's a whole arc in Dune too about how Paul, before he takes the water of life and pretty much like has the switch that goes off in his head that makes him fully embody this role um, about how he is scared of going South and seeing the fundamentalists Mm -hmm. because they are so devout in their, 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 their religion, their beliefs towards this, Mm -hmm. that it will sway him. And he's had visions of this and this specifically leading to the Holy war that he will wage. Yeah. And all of this, like uh, all of like the Lisa and Al-Gai prophecy and stuff like this was planted by the Benedict. Jesuit, yes. who are the group that like sort of controls everything but wants more control. And Stilgar is very clearly a religious <laughs> fanatic yeah. the entire time. Paul says, Paul tells him, this is fake. My mother is a part of the organization that made this up. Uh-huh. This is all fake. It's not real. And he goes, oh my God, Lisa Nagaib is so humble. <laughs> as written. He's so humble, guys. Can you believe that? It paints uh. Stilgar as a fanatic. Mm-hmm. He's, two times in the movie, he's like, Paul, kill me. Who's going kill me? I, I still ride with Stilgar, though. Oh, hell yeah. I need me one like him. <laughs> exactly, yeah. Stilgar's the best. As written. As written. Oh, my God. <laughs> well, 
Welcome back to Head in the Office, everybody. Today, we got to talk about the TikTok ban that is potentially going to happen. It's like 50 50. We, we got to talk about small businesses right here in mm-hmm. shambles. Oh, yeah. If no, TikTok we're, we're struggling. is bad. It's like, it's like uh, a third of our income, something uh-huh. like that. So you know, we're struggling out here. We're very biased. Just yes. putting that at the front. Absolutely. I'm not covering this mm-hmm. with intentions to see the other side, much like Jeff Jacks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We got some brief election news, and then we got labor news good and labor news bad. This is very true. If you know what I'm this talking very about. True. We got some, uh, uh, allegedly, to protect myself legally, assassination news. Yes, yes, so allegedly. We'll get there, though. If you want to support the show, you know, we're grassroots funded. Uh, and it's not as if you would just be giving charity to us. You'd also give, you'd also get early access to the episodes. Yes. And commercial free episodes. And uh, access to our personal friendship. Oh, ex- precisely that. <laughs> yeah, you can buy your way into that. And if you want all of that, patreon.com slash in the office pod. It supports the show. It keeps us running, especially if TikTok's going to get banned. You gotta get. You gotta go there. You got. That's to. where we are. Got to. Uh, speaking of going somewhere, if TikTok is banned, if you primarily follow <laughs> us on TikTok, make sure to subscribe on YouTube, follow us on Instagram, Twitter, and so on. TikTok is our biggest platform, obviously. But if that platform goes away because China bad, uh-huh. uh huh, you better be following us elsewhere. You better so watch our talking. reels and YouTube shorts. Oh, for fuck's sake, that sounds awful. <laughs> Dystopia, Jesus. You can also get some he- uh, some hitto merch at headintheoffice.com. It's all there in the description for. For you, and you could also leave a five star review. We got a bunch of them today. Yes, we do. We got a oh bunch my of them. So just, y'all came through. Y'all heated our calls. Yeah, I'll just dive right in. This first one is by L Bomb Twenty Five. My favorite way to dunk on right wing weirdos, from gay nutcrackers to back shots in the Senate, and even gasp. Real news. Hell yeah. Jeremy and Gage never failed to provide coverage on topics that really matter. After stumbling across these wonderful folks on TikTok, or as I like to call it, um, the Hell app. Yeah, as I like to call it, Chinese fucking Communist Party uh-huh, propaganda. Spyware, malware. Yeah, yeah. Jeez. I've since made my way back through the entire backlog of episodes and become a part of the Hitto family. Hitto not head. bare socially, of course, official Hitto head over here. Although I can't afford to ascend to Sunday supremacy, tuning in every Wednesday never fails to make this weenie smile. Collecting evidence to shoot down my Republican family stupidity has never been so enjoyable. P.S. In case you forgot, I condemn Hamas. Great review. Dang. Thank you so much. Hitto Much head. appreciated. Official Hitto head. Certified Hitto one. heads. Yeah. Amazing. This next one, Jarrett and Greg have done it again. By Nick Pett. Who are they? I don't know. But you should rate Hitto five non-parasocialist stars. New Patreon tier? Remember to all the listeners, applying for SNAP slash Medicaid is free. (laughs) Times are hard, and these programs have massive federal budgets that go unused every year. Very true. Log on to Al Gore's internet. Type apply for SNAP with your state's name and your preferred search engine. At worst, you don't qualify, and at best, you get free health insurance and a few hundred dollars per month for groceries. Uh, They also uh, obligatorily condemned terrorism yeah, i'm not sure good. what terrorism they're fucking condemning mm-hmm. you know are they condemning fucking patriots over here or maybe that are you just doing the right cause and liberal media has been uh mm, lying yeah. on their names or are they condemning the um paul atreides terrorism yeah yeah i don't know Golly, Could be anything. Man. uh next one a letter for my close non-parasocial friends by reagan is a b-word what? Before no, we <laughs> before we really get started, I feel like it's imperative that I say that I, Briar Lee Galen, condemn Hamas. And if I could give this podcast ten stars, I would. My story is not unlike many hitto heads. I was scrolling on TikTok one day and happened upon Jeremy and Gage's page discussing trans rights. As a non-transitioned pansexual trans man, I was immediately both intrigued and a bit nervous, seeing as these two are quite possibly the two whitest men I've ever seen. <laughs> However, I was impressed to find that not only did they have incredibly based takes on numerous nuanced subjects but they could also discuss it in a way that brought the seriousness of the situations to light while also providing humor to assist getting through these horrific times jeremy and gage have taught me how to properly debate the far right as well as the left in a sensible way bipartisan podcast over here during late october after the hamas attack i had actually made a tiktok video using primarily jeremy and gage alongside research i used to back up what they were saying to help disprove a jewish woman claiming palestinians wanted jewish people unalived I have since been blocked by said Jewish creator, which only leads me to believe how correct we all were, or we all are. Unfortunately, due to my paycheck basically disappearing by the time my bills are paid, I'm still a Wednesday weenie, but I'm hoping to upgrade to Sunday Supremacist and hear the sermon with my afternoon coffee very soon. Thank you for the killer pod, guys, and keep up the good work. Oh my goodness, absolutely wonderful review. Next up, we have number one geopolitical podcast by Soup with Beans. Mm -hmm. Soup with Beams wants you to know that they condemn Hamas. Wow, fantastic. Amazing review. <laughs> the next one by the Red Donut Class Axe. They say, my grandfather always told me, in this world, you're either a smart fella 
or a fart smeller. Realest shit I ever heard. <laughs> and I can definitely say these two are the former. Fantastic political commentary with just the right amount of tomfoolery to keep things interesting. Seriously love the pod, y'all. Keep it up. Amazing. This la- last, last, but certainly not least uh-uh. review. Uh-uh. These fella know. These fellas know what's up by a guy from Arizona. Mm-hmm. The Hiddo men, emphasis on men, these fellas are true men, That's as right. in like a good way, mm-hmm. are by far my favorite boys to go to for the for my dose of the news filtered through a beautifully crafted lens of comedy, uh-huh. a lens that is manufactured up to snuff, unlike the parts on various Boeing aircraft <laughs> topical. <laughs> Though my student pilot college student self can't afford to put myself pull myself up by the bootstraps to the title of Sunday supremacist. It certainly doesn't take away from the enjoyment I get through listening to these fellas each Wednesday. Any media that is of such high quality yet is available for free is a win. And all us weenies are thankful such content is not locked behind a paywall. Oh, and by the way, I must say with the utmost importance that I do in fact condemn Hamas. As I live in Arizona, a state whose politics don't quite reflect the beauty of the natural of its natural wonders, it's always refreshing to hear that we're not alone in getting fucked over by our state affairs. Mm-hmm. Fortunately, Arizona has been shifting blue for over the past few years. And it is, of course, thanks to the work Jeremy and Gage <laughs> yeah. have put in. Hell yeah. You're right, brother. I'll be in Maricopa County stuffing <laughs> ballot boxes. That's work. Along with the work of both Sunday supremacists and Wednesday weenies who vote in each cycle, influencing the politics of the U.S. like the Betty uh-huh. Jesuit of the Dune universe. Keep up the phenomenal work. Keep up the phenomenal reviews. Oh, my everyone. God. I'm my using the voice goodness. on poll workers in Maricopa County. <laughs> I'm like, take the Don't votes out. Don't count the Trump ballots. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, getting into the news coverage here, we're going to start off uh, talking about really the uh, the talk of the town. My whole world, basically. <laughs> um, it's been big news for the basically the past entire week. If you're on TikTok, you've heard about it. TikTok has officially talked about it, released statements and such. And uh, basically every big content creator has said like, hey, this is a problem. Mm-hmm. Of course, we're talking about the potential TikTok ban that um, just passed the U.S. House. So. I think we should get into the details. It passed the U.S. House pretty overwhelmingly. Oh, my God, yeah. It's very scarily like 80% overwhelmingly. 80% support, yeah. It was well, like 320 people voted for it. Yeah, let, let's get into it. So, basically, everyone's already heard of this, but the U.S. House of Representatives recently passed H.R. 7521, a bill titled, quote, Protecting Americans from Foreign Adversary Controlled Applications Act. Uh, it passed with overwhelming support. That is 352 to 65, which is... Uh, about as unanimous as you can get in the uh-huh. House of Representatives uh-huh. with, with how split our government is. Now, this bill has been labeled a TikTok ban, which it sort of is, uh, but it's actually worse than that by several degrees nice. of magnitude. Do tell. Uh, so this, I'm reading directly from Congress.gov here. It's the, the summary of the bill available. So official government information. It says, quote, this bill prohibits distributing, maintaining, or providing internet hosting services for a foreign adversary controlled application, uh, application, e.g. TikTok. So TikTok is directly named here. However, the prohibition does not apply to covered a covered application that executes a qualified divestiture as determined by the president. Uh, but huh? we can, uh, yeah, yeah, it, it, it gets pretty bad. So let's Wait, get- distributing, maintaining, or providing internet hosting services. So what? D- does that mean that like TikTok.com would mm-hmm. need to be blocked from mm-hmm. Google and Safari? Yeah, you're on the right track. So that no internet, like AT and T, would have to block me from being able to access the TikTok application through the internet. Right. Yeah. Yeah. That's. It, it's not just application. As I'll get into, there's a provision in the bill that I'll read off, but uh, it's not just like apps you can download from the App Store. It's like. Any access to anything hosted or centered in a country like China, which is considered to be a foreign adversary. Damn. Yeah. So it's it's actually a really big deal. If, so this bill, so like, like a fucking YouTube video from a Chinese creator? No, I think I think YouTube would be different because it's a, a company hosted, hosted in, in the, the United US, States. Yeah. I think this would just apply to like websites, applications, and so on that are hosted by China or some other foreign adversary. Um, but this, for people that have been kind of just dismissing this as the TikTok ban, it is far more than that. TikTok is directly named, as gonna, I'll talk I was about. Say, does but, this mean no more fucking Alibaba, AliExpress? I don't know. Maybe. Maybe, you know what? Maybe that's a good thing. Get these drop shippers <laughs> to shut up for once. Maybe no more. What is it? Timu? That's, that's no more Timu. Right? <laughs> yeah. Uh, so here, the bill functionally does a couple of things. Uh, and I'll, I'll read off some quotes from the bill. So first, it prohibits applications run by foreign adversaries from being used in the United States or they face 
a really massive fine. In the bill, it's defined as $5,000 for every user, wow. which for a platform like TikTok is $750 billion, which is three times the net worth of ByteDance, by the way. So that it just is of impossible. Of ByteDance, yeah. not even of TikTok, of yeah. the parent company. Wow. ByteDance, yeah. Uh, and it would also warrant investigations from the attorney general, and I would assume eventually just being completely blocked, geofenced, yeah. something like that. Um, applications are defined broadly, by the way. It's uh, from the quote, it's, or from the bill, it says, quote, the term foreign adversary controlled application means a website, desktop, desktop application, mobile application, or augmented or immersive technology application run by a foreign adversary. So pretty vague and pretty broad on that one. Uh, number two, the bill would also allow the president, along with uh, his agencies, to define who is a foreign adversary. There's basically no process for that in this bill. It's just kind of the president gets to do it. Nice. Yeah. It's just write them down on a list and then they're done. Cool. Yeah. And I previously I said uh, qualified divestiture. That's basically uh, if the the um, the company is divested from, say, China, for example, then it can continue to run. But it can't be hosted in a foreign adversaries. Uh, I don't know within the borders of a foreign adversary. Huh. So if TikTok were to be sold, for example, it would be divested from China and, you know, presumably sold to an American company, which I think is the intent with this bill. I, I, it's absolutely crazy how we've we've managed to get to the point where we're we're doing this. We're going so far for something like on the internet, right? Yes, but yeah. foreign foreign um adversaries, foreign allies, whoever, any foreign person can come and buy up whole blocks in Detroit. Yeah. They can buy up whole neighborhoods and invest in that property, but no, you you actually can't look at your hell divers two edits <laughs> yeah. you, you actually can't Less see propaganda really cool jjk edits yeah. anymore yeah. and lastly the bill directly names tiktok and bite dance it, it lists them as like um uh, entities such as tiktok bite dance and then any that are in like the borders of an adversary and so on so tiktok and bite dance directly named it notes that uh, elsewhere that foreign adversary controlled applications have 180 days to get out uh, of the United States or be sold to a non-adversary to continue being hosted in the United States. Huh. So, uh, which half that, that's also insane. Yeah. You have to sell your company to be able to operate here. That's nuts. Yeah. Yeah. It's pretty crazy. Now, the reason I say this is worse than a TikTok ban is because it does do a straight up ban, or you could say a forced sale, but for reasons we'll talk about, it's just a ban. It also gives the government, um, pretty sweeping powers to ban almost anything they deem a national security threat. Yeah, this is this is very much genuine big government overreach. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Like, I mean, it's like um, like Edward Snowden type shit, like the yeah. government spying on you type shit. It's pretty sweeping powers and powers that I would argue conservative, liberal, leftist, whatever. Um, you shouldn't be OK with the government having over you. Hey, uh, oh, my God. That is that is that is insane. But it's like, say, even the CCP is taking our data. I would much rather the CCP have it way over there. Than mm -hmm. fucking Joe Biden and the DOJ have what I've been watching on TikTok. Not yeah. that I'm watching anything bad, but like, fuck, at least one of these doesn't really affect me. Yeah. And it feels weird that um, like we we criticize China from the United States for sort of the Great Firewall. Yeah. Right? Like walling off their citizens from access to other Internet services and applications and stuff because we perceive that as a sort of censorship and sort of not allowing your citizens to get access to information that might rile them up against you. Mm -hmm. And then we're kind of going to just do the same thing, but say it's for freedom and security. Yeah. It doesn't really make sense to me. It seems hypocritical for one and also extremely dangerous because it isn't just TikTok. It says any website yeah. um, that meets these requirements or any application that meets these requirements. Well, TikTok's absolutely. just the first one because it's the biggest one. I've seen like end wokeness types on Twitter say like, oh, China does it. China bans foreign right. apps from their people being able to use. And y you guys don't say and it's OK when they do it, but we can't do it. No, it's straight it's up not. not OK when anyone <laughs> does it. We just have no power to stop China from doing that because, you know, we're Americans. Yeah. Uh, China, not a place I'd want to be a citizen of. Yes. You know what I mean? Like they uh, there's a lot of issues with China. China's done some good things. You know, I'm not just shitting on China, but there's a lot of bad civil rights issues over in China that yeah. I would not ever want to be exposed to. I enjoy being able to look up what happened in Tiananmen Square. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I enjoy yeah. that freedom. Yeah. It's also worthy to note that TikTok is incorporated, I believe, in the Cayman Islands, which I think is Singapore. Okay. Um, it just is hosted in China, like the, their headquarters like, are in China. And the parent company is a yeah. Chinese parent company. Yeah, but something it's like, like that. But the CEO is Singaporean, and I think I don't, I don't know exactly like how spread out it is. 
it's a social media company, mm-hmm. you know, like Instagram or or I guess that's owned by Meta now, like um, Meta or any of the other ones that we have, like Google and stuff. Um, it's it's a it's a software company. Yeah, you know, they're they're fucking enormous. Yeah, and it's like they've been complying with everything that the Congress has been asking of them. Mm-hmm. They, didn't they move their servers to Austin? Or somewhere in Texas? Yeah, the, well, and I think the offer on the table was like, we'll use only American personnel to monitor American data on American soil. Yeah. And Congress is kind of just ignoring that <laughs> and going with this instead because the dude was a little bit too, I don't know. Um, too Asian looking? Uh, yeah. Too Chinese looking, <laughs> too I guess? Too Chinese looking, oh yeah. Um, I think we should we should try to contend with the uh, the arguments from supporters because we like to deal with things in good faith. Always. You know what I mean? So Always. let's let's deal with the arguments directly. The first one that we're seeing from Jeff Jackson types mm. is that TikTok is a national security threat because the CCP, the Chinese Communist Party, can control it. And it is true, I would assume, although I don't know a ton about Chinese law. I'm going to assume it's true that if you uh, are any kind of information technology company in China, the CCP can probably tap you on the shoulder and say, like, give us all your information. Yeah. But I think the U.S. can do that, too. I'm pretty sure we explicitly <laughs> can. Wasn't there, like, a whole big deal a couple of years ago about how I think the government can now, like, like, there were protections on an iPhone to where if you don't give cops your passcodes or your face ID or whatever, they can't enter it. Mm-hmm. But now they can. Yeah, like, there yeah, are yeah. constant debates about whether or not police should be able to do that in investigations without warrants. and things. Mm-hmm. But we're just going to let them do this? Yeah, yeah. Like, I'm, I'm pretty sure the government can just access it if they want to. Yeah, and beyond that, when people say it's a national security threat, China can get all the data, and that's, like, a bad thing. My question is just, like, how, right? Uh-huh. Like, the, the, the common retort is often, like, the they'll adjust the algorithm based on user data and feed us misinformation. But this is true of all social media platforms because they can collect massive amounts of data on us uh, and sell it or buy it from other people. This just seems to me like an argument for greater regulation of social media in general, not specifically to take down TikTok. And maybe I'm not fully understanding the argument, but it's like, what is China showing to me that is misinformation, I guess? Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, sure, uh, Russia did this to some extent on Facebook, and Facebook is certainly, like, the propaganda platform in the history of the world. Um, but, like, what they, they don't really point to any examples of Chinese misinformation on the platform. Uh-huh. There's a ton of misinformation on TikTok, to be clear. Oh, absolutely. But, but it's not because Xi Jinping right. himself is going and saying, oh, give Jeremy misinformation yeah. right now. Y- you need to be able to prove that it's the fault of China and the CCP and not just people either intentionally or accidentally lying on the platform yeah. as people do, right? Like, you need to be able to prove that, and I just haven't felt that they have. No, absolutely not. And it's like you have Ted Cruz in the Senate hearings about TikTok questioning the CEO about how if you go and search inspirational quotes, it'll tell you to kill yourself. No, the fuck it doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. No, that TikTok does not have the best search engine. I'll, I'll give you that. Yeah. But you search inspirational quotes, and it is not putting self-harm <laughs> content on your screen, dog. Jesus Christ. Like, I feel like... Like TikTok is also one of the easiest social media platforms to curate your for you page to. Oh, it's a it's a good algorithm. Like if you if you're paying attention to what you're watching, you can pretty easily keep it up. Yeah. Like it's it's not one of those where you're just getting thrown random shit all the time. Yeah, it's also and I think this plays into it a little bit, which we'll talk about in a moment, but it's also the easiest platform for individual creators to grow on. Yes. I don't specifically know why. I'm not going to act like I know about the algorithms and the computers and all this sort of stuff, but it certainly is, at least right now, the easiest platform to grow on. YouTube is hard to grow on. Instagram is hard to grow on. But for some reason, TikTok is just very easy to gain a following. It's got to be because of the short form content. Yeah. Like, it's got to be just like the amount of scroll yeah. that you can get on there. Yeah. Um, so basically, it's just, it's an issue issue for all social media um and even if china didn't have access to tiktok to like tap on the shoulder and say hey give us this data they could just buy it from a a a, a data broker or they could just buy it directly from facebook as they've done before yes like it's not it doesn't make sense this argument is silly you're not actually protecting that's national a, that's security. a private sale a yeah. u.s citizen is choosing to give it to china <laughs> and my other question is like what what national security information do i give through my data that china could use for like nefarious purposes mm-hmm. i'm a citizen dog Ban it on uh, like federal devices, fine. I Hell is shit's that. banned on federal devices. And yeah, I get it. But, but, but I know I, nothing. I'm me. <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh, I podcast. Yeah. I tell you everything I know anyway. It's silly. It's silly. Uh, the other argument is that it's not a ban. It's just a forced sale. Which technically, according to the language of the bill, it could just be a forced sale. Sure, but they're not going to sell. They're not going to sell. And you know they're not going to sell. That's the intent. Like I it's think, just yeah. it's a cop out. Yeah. 
Yeah, and we say they're not going to sell because the United States is only 10% of the user base. Mm -hmm. Uh, TikTok is huge globally. There's like 150 million people in the U.S. on the app, and the app's got like far more users than that. Yeah. There's no reason they would sell just so they can stay in the United States and lose all of the money they make on the other 90% of their uh, user base. And also, it just makes me think like, the intent then is just to eliminate the app. So another, like a U.S. oligarch instead of what uh, an oligarch from Singapore mm-hmm. that maybe has ties to China can do propaganda, and then he can sell it to China. Yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> then yeah. he can sell all the data to China. And it's like, imagine if if we if if another nation like China did this to a U.S. application, and you don't even have to imagine it because China, I think, has done this to Facebook and other social media yeah. platforms based in the U.S. And we scream and cry about civil rights, which we should because it's like a you know it's a free speech concern. Mm-hmm. But we get angry when one country does it, and then we want to do it. Like, yeah. what's the point? Oh my God! If China said you need to sell Meta to us today. Yeah. Or else something is going to happen. Oh, my. We'd invade. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We'd invade. We've invaded for less. Oh, my goodness. Also, I got to note just, you know, economics. Uh, it is straight up anti free market behavior. Mm-hmm. And I'm not like a free market purist by any stretch of yes. the imagination. You know what I mean? Like, I'm not a free market capitalist, any of this nonsense. But presumably, Joe Biden and Democrats are. Mm-hmm. And this is anti competitive behavior just, straight up. It's just anti free anything. Well, and, and not just Democrats, Republicans too, right? They're supporting the bill as well. Yeah. D- w- baffling how bipartisan this is yeah. like I, I i truly do not understand why so many like conservatives they could vote for anything uh-huh. and it could not have any principles attached to it. and i'd be like yeah you know what that's fair for sure they're that's what they do they're the evil party but for most of the democrats to come on and be like oh yeah hell yeah we should do this i don't understand yeah and most of the democrats voting or most of the people voting no were democrats i think it was like 50 something out of the 65 that voted no were, okay. were democrats and it's the usual suspects like AOC, Rashida Tlaib, I think, uh-huh. and you know the other progressives. But um, interestingly, we got a very interesting coalition forming. Marjorie Taylor Greene voted no. Really? And some of the more, I think maybe Matt Gates voted no. I don't remember exactly. But it's like um, you got like the kind of psychos on the right, yeah, and the the pretty you know progressive left leaning people, like the sanest on the people left. in the house, yeah, and the most insane people in the house really mm-hmm. coming together on this one issue. It's that's, a unity issue. That's bipartisanship, uh-huh. right there. That's what I come here to see. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, the last little uh, I guess argument we can deal with it was one directly from Mike Pence. Oh, man, love that guy. He posted this on Twitter. He said, quote, and then I, I think this kind of reveals what it's all about. Okay. Quote, TikTok is digital fentanyl for America's youth and can uh-huh. be used as a technological weapon by the Chinese Communist Party. Its potency was already witnessed in TikTok's campaign to prevent this legislation from passing. Passage of this legislation demonstrates that appeasement to uh, communist China is over. Allowing TikTok to continue to operate in the United States while under CCP control is simply unacceptable. To me, this just reveals its Cold War bullshit. Yeah, That's and, all it and is. And it's also it's like, I promise you, us and pretty much everyone else that has built their platform on TikTok cares way more about TikTok being banned than I'm sure even TikTok does. <laughs> yeah. Again, we represent 10% of their user base. Like they're, they, it'll be a hit, but they're fine without us. I'm mm-hmm. not. <laughs> yeah, no, exactly. And the fact that he calls TikTok digital fentanyl, quote unquote, uh, is just culture war bullshit, like, right? Absolutely. And it's purest form. Don't get me wrong, the endless scroll, that shit gets me sometimes. Mm-hmm. But to say it's digital fentanyl, and Instagram isn't. Well, yeah, Meta isn't. Any yeah. other social media isn't. Let's be real here. To act like it's distinct from any other social media platform like YouTube or Instagram or whatever else is is quite silly. Yeah, and it, it just speaks to me that like he considers this quote unquote digital fentanyl uh, because kids are being poisoned by learning about like LGBTQ issues and Palestine on TikTok. And it's, like, and it's like he doesn't have this concern for any other social media platform. If you want to talk about people being glued to a screen, you know, in a, in a fent fold like state when they're consuming media, I'd have to look, look, look inward if I was Mike Pence. <laughs> yeah, and I, Facebook, dog. I would have to look at Facebook and I'd have to look uh-huh. at all the people that voted for him that sit on Fox News all fucking day. All the guys that are just retired and have nothing better to do than watch Laura Ingram. Yeah. <laughs> and see that their TV. Yeah. Like, which one of us acts more <laughs> like a drug addict? Like, I, I, I won't say that. I've never been caught victim to the scroll, right? I have. If, if you want to find the people in a fugue-like state, 
it's the boomers on Facebook that are in a few like state posting nonsense. Ridiculous. And Ridiculous. It's like hot fa- calling the kettle black. <laughs> yeah, Facebook is like the propaganda central of the world. Uh-huh. Not TikTok. Although, you know, TikTok misinformation isn't great. People do lie on the app. I would, uh, yeah, I'd look at the American company first. Aren't like fucking six of the ten top ten videos on Facebook always Ben Shapiro and yes. the other four are like Dan Bongino somehow? <laughs> yes. Oh my God. And you'll God, have like man. one John Stewart clip in there yes. at like number eight. <laughs> it's just all boomers fucking seething, seething yeah. over immigrants. Yeah. So I've been I've been thinking about the whole TikTok ban the last couple of days, and I have I've come up with three reasons I think the government actually wants to ban it. Okay. The first is that it, it, they do genuinely see it as a sort of wedge against China, right? It's like the Cold War bullshit. It's see they see it as flexing power and giving uh, and a sort of international boogeyman they can point at, right? It's a lot easier to justify things that they want to do if there's some scary big bad out there in the world, yeah. especially one like China when it's you know Chinese people bad is what a lot of people. <laughs> We'll jump to immediately. Uh-huh. The second one is uh, the second reason is that it pleases Meta almost undeniably, um, and of course other U.S. based social media platforms. Because if TikTok is banned, people got to go somewhere else for their social media fix. Presumably, it makes Mark Zuckerberg a lot more money, makes Meta a lot more money, and will line the pockets of anybody that takes pack money that comes from Meta. Ultimately, well, absolutely. Because if TikTok were to get banned, that opens up a huge hole in the market for American companies to come through and seize market share. Yes, yeah. like that has to be how Democrats are thinking about this. Mm-hmm. Because it's at it, least some of them. I I don't understand why else they're pro this why they're so united with the republicans and getting tiktok banned because this started as a conservative issue mm-hmm. this was not a bipartisan issue when it first came much like immigration well but it's with, failed like twice before exactly but with immigration i can somewhat understand what democrats are thinking when they're trying to like turn heel on the issue and mm-hmm. appease more far-right voters even though i don't think it's right That's i can stupid. i can put myself in their head and understand the flawed logic that got them there mm-hmm. with this one it's just got to be about getting American companies to capture the market. Mm-hmm. I don't know what else. It's a lot of money there for uh-huh. them that they, that they aren't able to capture because they, you know, they do it with Instagram Reels and like with what does, does Facebook call it? Facebook Reels or whatever the equivalent. I think is. it is Facebook Reels. Yeah, they they try to capture the same sort of dynamic that TikTok has, but they just can't do it. Well, it's Instagram it just doesn't Reels, work. YouTube Shorts. The scroll doesn't feel as good on there. It doesn't. It doesn't. It's, <laughs> it's bad and it's corny. I'll say that. Uh, and my last reason, and I don't think this is a huge factor. But I can picture, you know, Marco Rubio or Nancy Pelosi sitting in their office laughing about how they're taking the app away from young people, even though it's not just young people that use it. But I think they see it as a thing primarily used by young people to spread um, uh, political messaging that they don't agree with. Mm -hmm. And I I don't again, I don't think this is the primary reason for the bill, but I think it's one reason that sits in the back of their mind. And they're thinking like, yeah, let's take this away from people so they can stop talking bad about us on the app. Yeah. And to be clear, I, I don't think that posting on tiktok is like organizing quote no. unquote right like i don't think that's what that is but i do think that people on tiktok become more knowledgeable about how to protest or how to form a union by using the app and i think it gets their mind working about political issues and i don't think people like nancy pelosi or people like marco rubio or ted cruz like that it does that for people in some ways although there's misinformation on the app it is an information sharing platform well it's also like when you look at what's going on in gaza when you look at israel's genocide i don't think public outrage is as big without tiktok and that's really just because of tiktok's propensity over other platforms like in- instagram reels facebook reels and youtube shorts for really anyone to kind of go viral mm-hmm. and get people to notice an issue and because the For You page is so good at being for you, mm-hmm. it will constantly feed you these messages and yeah. constantly feed you these things. And maybe that scares them. I don't know. Yeah. But, like, I get more content like that on on TikTok than I do anywhere else. Yeah, and I, I just – I fail to believe that it's not at least part of the calculation for them. Yeah. I don't think – like whoever designed the bill is sitting there thinking like, yeah, we got to take this away from people because they're going to use it to like overthrow the government or whatever. Mm. And to be clear, there are a lot of issues on TikTok about like creators being reductive because of the time limit. Absolutely. People not fully explaining or people just straight up being wrong on issues. Sometimes dumbasses go viral. Yeah, even like people, that gets popular. People on the left even just straight up being reactionary. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like it's not perfect for on any side of the political spectrum. But I do think there are contingents on TikTok of left wing people that met other left wing people and are now sharing information and I suppose politics with each other that 
before TikTok wouldn't have done this at all. Well, I like, think it's a sort of platform for information sharing, like I said before, and I don't think a lot of elected politicians, especially older ones, like that very much. I feel like TikTok has done more to sort of like bridge the gap between legacy media and newer forms of media than any other platform has. Like I remember you you seeing like consciously on like NBC. Mm-hmm. Like I've seen TikTokers with these massive like platforms that they amassed in like a short amount of time start going on actual like panels on yeah. CNN on MSNBC and having more of a voice than someone who got big doing video essays on YouTube whatever mm-hmm. like yeah. it's it's there, there's something there that's kind of like things are changing yeah and like we of course we're sort of biased here yeah because a lot of a lot of you came from TikTok but that's also sort of an example of what we're talking about right mm-hmm. like we ne- we don't get nearly as many we don't get anywhere close to as many views on YouTube or our other platforms compared to what we get on TikTok but that just kind of goes to show you that it's easy for individuals who previously have absolutely no clout politically yeah. or, or on the internet whatsoever, it's easy for those kinds of people to gain a following and to share a message. And again, those messages can be riddled with misinformation. Ours isn't, I hope. <laughs> um, they can be, but it's sort of um, easily accessible in that way. And it, it's, it's a sort of... It's a sort of accessibility other platforms don't offer. And I think that accessibility lends itself really well to being engaged in politics, at least to some degree, getting knowledgeable about issues in a way that you simply can't on Instagram or Facebook or YouTube Reels or anything else. And TikTok has just been so much better than other platforms at selling relatability. Yeah. Now, I'm not going to say that like it's actual real genuine relatability because a lot of it's manufactured, but no matter what, they sell relatability easier than anyone else, no matter what kind of content you make as well. Yeah. The ability for you to go viral on TikTok by just whipping out your phone and just making like a minute long video about some comment that you saw Mm -hmm. unmatched on any other platform you're not doing that shit on youtube you're not doing it on instagram yeah and we have a lot of people either write reviews or message us about how like we've helped radicalize them or open their eyes to different Mm -hmm. issues think of if that would even be possible if you hadn't first seen us on tiktok right yeah uh, or think if you primarily view our content through TikTok and not through listening to the long form content, um, think of how little you would have heard from us if TikTok hadn't existed at all. Yes. Right. Like it's it's that kind of stuff. And again, I I don't want to put on a tinfoil hat and say like, oh, they're banning it to silence leftist opposition or anything like that, because I don't think that that's really what this is. But I do think in the back of their minds, it's uh, one component they're thinking about that a lot of information, especially pro-Palestine information is being shared on this app. And one bonus of us having forcing a sale or one bonus of us banning it would be that that kind of rhetoric isn't spreading as much. Yeah. There's definitely that, that boomer itch in the back of their brain. That's just anti-social media. Yeah. Yeah, It's just social media. These young people don't know what the fuck they're talking about. Um, yeah. So to end off the TikTok ban, I will say, um, optically, complete dog shit for democrats uh yes speed running losing young people it's every decision that they've made in the last five months has been calculated to alienate (laughs) young voters they want to lose democratic strategist the fakest job yeah the fakest job yeah especially especially on this issue because did you see trump came through and said actually no let's not ban yeah which is crazy because he's just he's just bucking the trend he tried to before trump isn't principled at all he's the guy who made this popular i think he tried Tried to in 2020, I think. Yeah, he's the guy who got on and said, oh, we need to get rid of TikTok. He's the reason why Republicans now are actually trying to ban it because he made it popular. But oh my goodness, man. It's kind of awesome. Fucking Jeff Jackson making a video. We shouldn't ban TikTok. Yeah, he got bullied. He couldn't stand the heat. He made a video saying, guys, no, we shouldn't ban TikTok. That would be wrong. And then he goes and votes to ban it. Yeah. Well, and he made that video after he voted to ban it. Yeah, he made the video after (laughs) he voted to ban it. What? (laughs) It's just awesome because, like, Jeff Jackson, if you guys don't know, we we talked about him a bit last week, and we shouldn't have said anything nice about him at all. It's like milk. Yeah, but Jeff Jackson, he's a House member from North Carolina, and now he's running for AG in North Carolina. He's, like, the relatable politician. Yeah. You know, he sits in his kitchen, makes TikTok videos, and tells you about what he's been doing on committees. Um, He's been making these ever since he got elected. He was like, here's how my first day went. Mm -hmm. Stuff like that. Very simple stuff. I appreciated it because it's like a window inside of Congress. He's a newbie. It's a cool bit of transparency. Yeah, yeah. Um, but then he comes out. He, and to be clear, made a huge following on TikTok. Yes, the only 2. reason. 2.3 million followers or something like well, that? Well, it was 2.5. Oh, now it's 2.3. <laughs> um, but he got a huge following on TikTok. That's why so many people knew him. Some could argue that's why he's so popular right now. And then he voted to ban the app. Yeah. 
And he's like, this isn't a band. There's just security concerns. And everyone's like, all right, dog. What fucking security concerns, yeah. bro? Be transparent. That's what you kind of came up on. Yeah, he might have gotten like 10,000 Stitch videos just oh, dunking on man. him from prominent creators. And, you know, he deserved it. He did deserve That's it. That's democracy. Oh, hell yeah. That's democracy. Uh, but that ends us off on the TikTok ban. And I think we can move on to a little bit of election coverage. We, we, we did have that bit from Nancy Pelosi where she's like, oh. uh, tic-tac-toe. Oh. <laughs> It's not a TikTok ban. It's making TikTok better. Tic Tac Toe. Tic Tac Toe. I win. China she said loses. good deal or something like that. God, oh man. my God, brother. She sucks. Shit old people say. Do you ever think, I want to buy my way into heaven? Always. I want to buy my way into the good graces of the people that I'm listening to in my ears right now. That's right. You can do that if you head over to patreon.com slash head in the office pod. And not only will you be supporting the show, not only will you mm -hmm. get early access to all of the content that we produce, but you'll also get an ad free experience That's on the right. Patreon every Sunday, every time we release an episode. You'll be able to pull up to the sermon on Sunday, mm -hmm. on the Lord's Day, to hear the gospel as it's spoken. Yeah, no more being late, no more interruptions mid-episode if you're listening to this ad right now. Exactly. It's on patreon.com slash head in the office pod. It's one of the best ways to support the show. It's one of the longest enduring ways to support the show. Help help buy, buy a pass from all the sins you've committed. Mm -hmm. Start coming to church, Yeah, and we can get things going. Yeah, that's only if you head over to patreon.com slash head in the office pod. It's in the description. It's there for you. I'm saying, brother. Tic-tac-toe to the polls. Speaking of things that only old people are going to be doing this year, time for election coverage. Yeah, let's talk about some election coverage. We got, uh, this is going to be brief this week because it's not too much election news. We only have news from the primary election in Georgia. And then we got some news on our boy RFK. Oh, I RFK love that Jr. guy. Yeah. So in Georgia, Trump and Biden both won, obviously. This was last Tuesday. And it seems there was uh, no uncommitted option on the ballot for voters to even choose. Threw me off. Which, uh, yeah, it doesn't give us much to analyze, huh? Uh -huh. Can't, can't go county by county like, oh, Joe Biden lost this many in Fulton and Trump lost this many. Yeah, it can't do that. I wonder, like... There being no uncommitted vote, is that like a strategic thing? Or is this like Might something that was law. probably set in stone a while yeah. ago that they're like, no, you can only vote for the candidate's pick? Yeah, the state party probably decided who was going to be on the ballot, and they just didn't put an uncommitted option. That makes sense. Um, So, so you know, it, with the primary, it's a mess because states have different rules. Mm -hmm. Um, But uh, so, so there's not really much for us to talk about. In Georgia, Biden received more than 95% of the vote. Trump received 84.5% of the vote with Haley's zombie campaign getting about 13.2% of the vote somehow. Why? Got to be absentee voters, right? Like, I don't know. Absentee voters. That submitted their ballot before she dropped out on Could Super Tuesday. Did you that early? Probably. Or Super like Tuesday was only a week ago. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. I guess it's absentee voters. Or it's spiteful people. Really, People really un unhappy with Trump, maybe. I don't know. It can't be. It's got to be. But who's voting absentee for Nikki Haley? Like, in my mind, the Nikki Haley voter is very, like, uh, middle class, like, uppity. You yeah, know? yeah, doesn't know their place. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, so I, I don't know what, maybe you can interpret something with that data, but um, Biden and Trump both getting the delegates from Georgia. Uh, I guess the real elections to look out for will be Arizona, which is coming out, or those results will be mm -hmm. a day before this episode airs for everybody else on Tuesday of this week. And then Wisconsin and Pennsylvania will be in April. Uh, I believe Wisconsin has an uncommitted option. I don't know if Pennsylvania or Arizona do. Uh, Arizona do listeners, if you're in those areas, you can let us know what the mm -hmm. options are. But if you if if you have an uncommitted option, go crazy, go crazy, go vote, crazy, vote, vote for uncommitted, it. Uh, vote twice for it. Oh, yeah, Nate, <laughs> stuff the ballot box. Vote a couple in, times in for it. You know, your parents might not go out to vote. Use their names. Yeah, yeah. Uh, not a ton to talk about this week for presidential news, no. except for RFK Jr. What he do this time? There was a story in a couple of news outlets that he's been floating VP picks, and he's narrowed it down Ooh, to what, what makes it. What makes him think he's gonna get that far? <laughs> well, he's running independent. <laughs> the he's running audacity, independent. brother! He, he's he's floating VP picks, and uh, widely reported that he's narrowing it down to. Uh, he's narrowed it down to kind of two top options, but he's got some others in his oh back my. pocket. The top two are Aaron Rodgers uh, nice. and Jesse Ventura. Jesse Ventura, the conspiracy guy. Well, and Aaron Rodgers. <laughs> <laughs> the conspiracy guys. Yeah, uh, Aaron Rodgers, of course, NFL quarterback for the Jets, previously Green Bay Packers. Jesse Ventura, former WWE wrestler. Uh, and also a, the governor of Minnesota, I believe. He also ran a conspiracy theory show. Oh, yeah. Pretty I crazy guy. I want to say on, like, Discovery or something. Mm. I used to watch it when I was a child. <laughs> <laughs> 
Um, so I feel like, you know, being in the WWE and being in the NFL should like disqualify you from ever holding a position Seems of power. Seems like all, and I mean <laughs> all of these former athletes that take a turn to politics yeah. just are the worst. Yeah, I don't think you should be able to hold public office after that. Uh, I don't think one, one too bad, like Aaron Rodgers is still in the Jets, so you could, he's still like in the league. He's still a pro yeah. baller. Yeah, he's still you know a pro baller. I mean? despite but Jesse the Ventura ACL, is yeah. out of the WWE. As soon as you're out, you know what? As soon as you fade in relevancy, as soon as you moved from Green Bay being like their star quarterback to the Jets because of an injury, uh-huh. you should be silenced. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Shouldn't <laughs> you, be allowed. you should not be allowed to have media. Of Aaron Rodgers, RFK said, quote, Aaron Rodgers is battle tested. He stood up. He's been hammered by the press, stood up for things we believe in. I like that part of his character. He's a critical thinker, and I think we need that. He's been hammered by the press. Aaron Rodgers, why don't you make that fucking pass? Yeah, mostly. No, I think it was mostly for his anti-vaccine takes. You remember those? Oh, that's true. I think he's also had a lot of anti-trans takes recently. But oh, I'm sure. So has fucking everyone and their yeah, mother be on the Republican side. This is ridiculous. I think he also came out recently and said HIV was a government plot or that's something like that. sick. Which <laughs> seems in line with RFKs. Look, if he picks Aaron Rodgers for his like VP choice, I'm not going to be concerned about him pulling votes away from Biden at the very least. Absolutely not. Not a problem for joe biden absolutely especially because aaron Rod- just stout conservative yeah yeah stout if it was jared goff i'd be worried oh my god but i'm saying it. america's sweetheart jared yeah. goff the heart <laughs> yeah. of detroit come on <laughs> according to the hill he's also considering tulsi gabbard rand paul and andrew yang for tulsi VP gabbard yeah. wasn't tulsi gabbard on trump's list or no i think so yeah but she, she probably turned i think she turned it down though damn yeah, yeah. Would have been a powerhouse campaign right there. Yeah, so uh, it looks like maybe Aaron Rodgers is the VP pick. You know, they're not going to win, obviously, but it would be kind of fun to uh, see what happens. I, I Rand Paul, that's another interesting yeah. one. I, I know Rand Paul said that he wants to try and stop the TikTok bill in the Senate. Like, moving back to that, oh. he made a statement that said he wants to obstruct it. Real libertarian, I so support him. that's cool. That one cool thing Rand Paul's ever done. He's also um, pro marijuana legalization, I think. So two I, cool things that Rand Paul broken ever clock, done. Broke <laughs> broken right, clock, literally twice a day. Yeah, ex- ex- that's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. Um, moving on to some some the good the half labor. of the labor news. Yes, we got two labor news stories coming at you. This one is actually a pretty good one. Last week, Bernie Sanders introduced a bill in the Senate to lower the work week to 32 hours instead of 40 hours a week with no reduction in pay. Kind of gas. Now, before you start um, freaking out and saying this is impossible, it literally bankrupt America. Nobody wants to work anymore. If the bill was implemented, it would be implemented over four years, allowing businesses to adjust gradually rather than switching to 32 hours if it passed tomorrow, for uh-huh. example. So I think each year it would be like 38 and then 36 and 34, then eventually 32. Yeah. So it would be over time. It wouldn't, it wouldn't literally happen right away, which is the same as his... Um, uh, Medicare plan, I believe he he it, it, Medicare for all plan from yep. Bernie Sanders. He didn't want it to just be literally everyone's on Medicare all of a sudden. Yeah, it would be implemented over several years. I don't I don't know why conservatives always act like whenever like a a radically pro worker pro American policy gets pushed through like this um what you just mentioned and fifteen dollar minimum wage yep. even they act like it's going to be implemented tomorrow. Yeah. Every single one of these programs, $15 minimum wage was like over the course of four years, mm-hmm. it's like a dollar increase in the minimum wage every year up until we hit that $15 benchmark. Yeah. Very reasonable. Very reasonable. When conservatives yeah. are the people that come in and say, absolutely no Muslims on day one of my presidency. <laughs> yeah. Like, come on. Yeah. And it's also like no, no bill, even if enacted quickly moves that fast. Yeah. It, it, they almost all of them have some period where it's like, okay, the government will get their shit together and then enact it. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? Even the TikTok bans like 180 days. Yeah. Like we'll still have it for a little bit. Yeah. We'll be fucking grinding on <laughs> TikTok for that little bit. Twice a day, <laughs> twice a day, mostly twice a day. Uh, now Bernie Sanders bill would also require businesses if enacted to pay time and a half for work days longer than eight hours in a day hell yeah and would require double time for work longer than 12 hours in a day so another just um boost to people working longer than eight hours i uh-huh. guess amazing day, regular hours yeah good stuff additionally once 32 hours is reached businesses would have to uh or would be required for wages and salaries to stay the same on the whole which is where the no reduction in pay part comes in right so if this bill were enacted once we hit in four years that 32 um hours a week mark uh, presumably, if your wages are the same as they were before, you wouldn't lose money for the day less that you're working. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. So that would be um good for everybody. 
I that, think. That's, Let's work. That's what I think. Let's work. Friday on a Thursday now. Mm-hmm. Come on now. Who doesn't love that? <laughs> three day week. Everyone loves a three day weekend, folks. Everybody loves it. Now, this is one of those things that's uh, demonstrably good for uh, the United States, other countries as well, but just won't pass because Republicans and frankly, Democrats too. Yeah. Senator Mike Braun, a Republican from Indiana, has already said that this would destroy small employers uh, if it was a federal requirement, which it wouldn't, by the Why? way. Why? Why? He just claimed that. Nice. And then uh, a smaller version of this bill was introduced in the House a year ago. And guess how many votes it got? Seven. Oh seven Democratic votes total. Seven Democratic votes in the total. House. In the House. So with so what? AOC receded to leave. <laughs> yeah, probably. Ro <laughs> Yeah. Seven people total voted for the bill uh, when this was introduced last year. There is a partner bill introduced in the House right now. We'll see if that goes anywhere. But you know, it's Mike Johnson's. Mike Johnson's uh, full house, goofy baby. house over there. I know Mike Johnson has said that he might be willing to hold a standalone vote on Ukraine aid. So oh, I think he's starting to get fed up with some GOP. Oh, he's going to get fired. Shit. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> which is, that's yeah, kind of gas. I'm supportive. Now, if you're skeptical of 32 hour work weeks, uh, various studies have shown that it's very beneficial. Yeah. Specifically, one study done in the United Kingdom was done on 61 organizations. They implemented a four day work week. A year after the study concluded, 54 of those organizations, 91%, continued the policy. Half of the organizations adopted it permanently. Um, 100% of managers reported positive results of some kind. 82% suggested that, or said that surveys suggested that um, there was some kind of improvement in staff well-being. Mm-hmm. So it's it's strictly a good thing. And you can imagine why, right? Yeah. It's more rest. It's less time you're spending at work. So then when you are at work, you're more energized and more productive. It's pretty simple. We've actually known this for quite a long time with sociological data. It's just good to be see it introduced at a federal level. So there have been countless studies that come through and say, like everyone who works an office job, like you are only productive for three hours yes, of the yeah. eight hours yeah. that you are there. You five hours of the workday is just bullshit. Yeah, it is just bullshitting around, sitting at the water cooler, you know, going around and talking, hiding in the bathroom. Mm-hmm. Like that's 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 what's going on here. And I know, um, I remember I'd heard some people talk about uh, in Virginia. I think some local like office tried to implement this, like public office tried to implement a 32 hour work week. And people are using this as a reason why this would never work. But the reason why they stopped doing it was because people like constituents weren't happy that they weren't able to reach out to their, their public servants mm-hmm. on mm-hmm. a Friday. And there's a very easy way to fix this. Mm-hmm. Stagger the work week. I was just about to say, have oh, some of them. You got some do. people Tuesday to Friday, uh-huh. other people Monday to Thursday. Literally nothing changes. <laughs> yeah, you just stagger the work week. Yeah, yeah. It seems like an easy way to do it. And also on a historical note, you know, there are people rallying against this, saying like, "Oh, well, why would we limit the free market or fucking whatever?" We've done this before. Yeah. In 1940, the 40 hour work week was established after work in Congress was done, and a lot more work by labor unions was done to make it happen. And states right now, like California, and I. I think Massachusetts are working towards adopting a 32 hour work week policy through state legislation. Mm -hmm. So it's not something that's unheard of. It's something that's been done through various studies in other countries. And it's strictly something that would be better for all workers. But again, it's one of those things that is unambiguously good would be unambiguously Uh helpful, not only for individual workers, but also the economy, but simply won't happen because Republicans uh, and a lot of Democrats don't want it to happen. So many people have staked their entire identities on how much I go to work. Mm -hmm. I go to work. What do you Mm -hmm. do? Lazy yeah. liberal sitting on your ass all day. Yeah. And, you know, I think this could also be posed as a sort of um, pro-family policy, right? It's more time you get to chill with your kids. You get to spend less on child care. Yeah. Why, why need all these government subsidies for child care mm-hmm. when you could just be there? That's one day less. Uh-huh. One day less you got to spend on child care. Or yeah. even a 32-hour work week. Say, you, say you're say you still working Monday through Friday, but you just cut your hours the rest of the days. Yeah. Now you can you can have enough time to take your kid to school. Mm-hmm. Go work your full day and pick them up at the end of the day. Yeah. No more latchkey. Yeah. And I can't even imagine, I, like, I feel like almost every worker in the country that works a regular 40 hour work week would be like, yes, please. I'm begging. You know what I mean? Like, absolutely, <laughs> this would be a lifesaver. I would feel so much better with three days of rest instead of two. But it's going to run into opposition. And I doubt, I don't even know if this passes out of the committee it was introduced to. Um, I guess we'll have to wait and see. But I think it's still a good precedent to introduce it. Um, and get the idea into the congressional archives, I suppose. I it's a so, good thing to see. I think so, too, especially after the UAW strikes earlier last year when mm-hmm. one of the key agenda items was a reduced work week. I think they argued for 32 hours. They didn't quite get it, but they yeah. did get their hours reduced at the at UAW factories. Yeah. 
it's I feel like it's starting to become a bit more popular. Yeah, and Sean Fain was there speaking in favor of the bill. Yes. Yeah, he he was there on behalf of Bernie Sanders saying like this is exactly what the American workforce needs. And one of the main arguments that Bernie Sanders made is that of course productivity has gone up, but also technology has advanced so much that allows it, it, technology's advanced so much in such a way that allows us to be more productive than ever. Why aren't we getting a little bit more rest than we did back in 1940? Yeah, you know what I mean. Like technology's advanced so much, uh, profits have expanded so much. Why aren't people getting a little bit more time off? So they can spend it with their family, do whatever the fuck they want to do. Um, I don't know. Start a hobby, write a book. I don't know. Why write we, something. Why are we reaping the rewards of our productivity? Right. Well, why is it only the, the the guys who invest, who had money to start off and invested in the company, are reaping all the rewards of my labor? Mm -hmm. But I can't. I don't know. Like have a couple extra hours a week to just chill. Yeah. And yeah. not have to wake up, eat breakfast, take a shower, go to work, come home. Do do dinner, yeah. put the fucking dishes away, have like an hour to myself, and then go to bed and do it all again yeah. five days of the I, week. Life shouldn't be grinding. You exactly. know what I mean? Like life should not be constantly grinding just to get by. I think humans are meant to do more than just barely survive. Uh-huh. Ah, hot take, maybe. Call uh -huh. me a communist. But this is again one of those things that would be really good in the long term, uh, even for the economy as yeah. a whole, even for corporations that, you know, employ a lot of people, it'd be good in the long term. But short term they would lose money. Um, because they would, you know, people would be working less, yeah. uh, and that's probably going to be reason enough for their resistance. Also, there's a sort of psychological element of like, I don't want to give my workers breaks because mm -hmm. if I work them hard enough, then they won't question me in any way. Uh, it's the sort of we talked about it before. I don't, I don't know if we ever gave it a name, but just sort of how um, politicians, people in power, CEOs, stuff like this, just look down on workers as like subhuman. Oh yeah, it's it, it's reason enough for them to oppose the bill. It's like that. It's uh, not going to happen. There was one guy I can't remember who he is. He went on. I think uh, the Ingram angle at like 11 o'clock on Fox News and he we made a TikTok about it. It popped. It was like one of our first TikToks to pop off, I think. And he said straight up, you have to treat your workers like dogs. Yeah. yeah. Like even if you have to withhold food from them, that's OK. You have to train them like a dog. Yeah. Brother, this is how they're talking about us yeah. just in the open for anyone to hear. Or the dude at the um, this was like a couple months ago, the dude at the World Economic Forum who was like, we need to see pain in the economy. Yeah. Because wor workers are like he didn't say uppity, but he's basically saying they've gotten to uppity. Yeah, the you know, they don't force. know their, they don't know their place. Uh -huh. Basically, we need pain in the economy. Um, and we need the, the workers to stop being the bosses so the bosses can be the bosses. Oh, for sure. It's like you just want to, like the the pandemic and the government benefits that came from the pandemic kind of shifted the power scale a little bit. Mm -hmm. People felt less vulnerable and therefore didn't need their bosses as much. And capitalists don't like this, right? They want the power scale to be completely imbalanced so that they can uh, control the entire workforce. And so the workforce feels easily replaceable. Yeah, well, last year, weren't there like a ton of articles and shit about how a lot of companies are making their employees stopping work from home that yes, they started yeah. during COVID. It's, it's control. Despite, despite no dips in productivity, mm -hmm. they're just making them come back to the office just because they want them to be in the office so that yeah. they can actually watch them and have control over them. Yeah. It's crazy, bro. They don't fuck with you. Uh-uh. <laughs> they don't fuck with you. They, you are a cog. He called me. He told me he does not <laughs> fuck with you. You're a cog in the machine and they want you to be easily controllable and easily replaceable. Yeah. And, and bills like this are explicitly pro-worker, pro pro-human i would argue and um that's enough for business ceos to pay off some some democrats and republicans and not let this happen it's just unless you're just so absolutely cucked why would you not want this yeah unless you've staked your identity on how much you go to work and how many hours you put in why would you not want this and you can't even argue this is like an inflation policy government's uh -huh. spending no money on this exactly it's got no money it's just regulation the, people aren't even making more money because of this uh -uh. they just have more time uh -huh. you can't even say this is going to turn the one two three dollar menu into the two three four dollar menu it's, that's <laughs> yeah. not what's going on and yeah it's just it's more time and it happens so gradually that like it, the people aren't even going to feel it or like companies that the profit margins won't even feel it yeah by much. the time it happens i'll be bitching about this 32 hour work week <laughs> exactly i'll be like we should be working 25 hours I mean, a week you should put me in here monday wednesday friday <laughs> exactly it would be better for everybody i think all the listeners that work a, a full shift you yeah that work a full yeah. uh, a full week of work everyone would agree uh 32 hours much better i'm saying much uh, however i think everyone would also agree that i feel like if 15 minimum wage didn't pass 
this is fucking dead in the water. Yeah. yeah. There's no way. Yeah. That's another thing that's just strictly regulation. And mm-hmm. that would happen so gradually that the economy would not suffer. It's a, you, you, you literally a couple cents, a couple cents extra every year. Mm-hmm. The economy is already moving towards higher minimum wages than that already. Oh yeah. At my fucking local Qdoba, they're starting at $18 an hour. Yeah. yeah. Like I, I, we're kind of past the point of $15 minimum wage being sustainable. Yeah. I think people have like done the math and argued for like 20 or 25, which like you can get to a point where it is legitimately excessive yeah but like 15 dollars, yeah is like uh, barely enough That's, and 725 is certainly not enough absolutely hasn't oh moved since God. 2009 oh my and then you have mother like side story in california they've upped the minimum wage for fast food workers to 20 dollars an hour except panera Oh, did they, they lobby? <laughs> they he, Apparently, he's like best friends with the guy who owns most of the Panera chains in California, or they're like close, they're That's acquaintances. Awesome. And so Gavin Newsom made a carve out and said, unless your institution sells bread, you have to pay $20 an hour. Holy shit, they just lobbied the government. Like, what the fuck? Do I, like, <laughs> I, that is just, I feel like the most blatant example of the liberal hellhole that California is. Oh like the, my God. The dog. kind of just super, just blatantly corrupt policies. Yeah. Because there's no other reason other than, oh, I know, Jesus I know Christ. a guy. Dog, you get like one seat super majority in a place like Michigan and they're doing communism. Yeah. And then you look over in California where getting uh, a full legislature of Democrats is so fucking easy. Yeah. And they're and they're doing this corrupt ass shit. Karl Marx is being revived in the Midwest and everyone's like, oh, (laughs) California is liberal. New York's liberal. No, baby. It's the Rust Belt. We're coming through. (laughs) Yeah. Gavin Newsom himself draws a carve out for Panera to not have to raise their wages. That's ridiculous. Insane. Blew my mind when I read it. I was like, oh, this has got to be something conservatives are lying about. No. And this is the kind of shit that pushes people towards Republicans, too. Yes. Because, like, Republicans straight up just wouldn't raise the wage for anybody. Uh -uh. (laughs) But liberals will get paid off by somebody uh, because they're not against that kind of thing. Republicans And then they'll get people get angry, rightfully so. Conservatives can pretend to be principled by just making everyone suffer equally. But then a Democrat goes and does this and people are like, well, why? Yeah. Very clearly, why are you doing this? This is government corruption. They say, no, it's not. Yeah, yeah. No, it's not. Once again, our, our thesis that um, these quote-unquote democratic strongholds produce the worst kind of Democrat, proving true. Well, because they got nothing to worry about. They got nothing to worry about. And if you're a Republican, you just run as a Democrat. Exactly. You Motherfuckers I mean? in Michigan, they got to work for results. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. They, they, they got to work for that shit. In Minnesota, they had to work hey, for that. There, there's purpose in the struggle. Uh. There's purpose in the struggle. <laughs> Have you ever wondered what we're thinking about during mm-hmm. the week? Mm-hmm. Well, I you know what I'm thinking about. I know what I'm thinking about. Yeah. I probably know what this guy's thinking about too, but mm-hmm. do you? I don't think you do. But if you want access into, I don't know, my mind palace, the, yeah. the inner workings of what's going on, how mm-hmm. how I come up with the with the bars I need to to develop the show every week, to produce this mm-hmm. wonderful podcast we bring to you every week, why don't you head over, on over to a, a X, formerly known as Twitter.com, uh-huh. and give us a follow, you know? You can also consider becoming a subscriber on YouTube. That's right. Uh, you could follow us on Instagram, see what we're shit posting on the oh stories. Oh my gosh. We have a plethora of options available to you if you want to engage with the Hitto community. So consider following us on social media. It's completely free. For free. It's completely free and it supports the show. Um, moving on to, to worse labor yeah, news. Yeah, moving on to, I guess, the opposite spectrum of labor news. We're 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 going we're making America great again. Death and destruction, baby. You know what I mean? We're moving back to a sort of a gilded age within labor where companies <laughs> companies feel empowered to do literally whatever they want and to get into it just in the midst of yet another Boeing airline airplane. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This happened this week. Losing a panel mid-flight. Awesome. A man who was a quality control official at one of their factories was found dead in his car the day he was supposed to testify in court about a whistleblower case he had been building against a company for the last seven years. This guy. Yeah. Allegedly. 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 Allegedly this is fishy john barnett had been working with boeing for 30 years and from 2010 worked at a factory responsible for the 787 dreamliner Mm -hmm. bbc reports that in 2019 john alleged that under pressure workers had been fitting substandard parts to the aircraft on the production line to avoid delays in delivery Mm -hmm. 
sounds reasonable, right? There's a lot of crunch going on. Like people are yeah, people, completely reasonable. People are doing what's going to get done. And this guy, he, he's saying like, this is wrong. He's a quality control guy. Yeah. The FAA later did an investigation that found that the factory could not account for parts that it had labeled as substandard and were supposed to be discarded. This corroborates a claim made by John saying that the workers aren't following procedures that Boeing outlined they need to follow to allow them to track defective parts. Mm-hmm. Every defective part in these factories needs to be tracked and filed and has to be accounted for you're telling me you find 56 just not you just i don't know well especially because like we had the door fly off that one point uh-huh. that had to be grounded and then for this plane it was like a part of the the side just it was completely a panel missing. just flew off dare i say a defective part <laughs> yeah dare it's like when, when we're talking about air travel it, you know air travel is very safe nowadays it's the safest form of transportation which is but wild when you see well, specifically because it's so rigorous uh-huh. right but then when you see um cutting corners because it would cost too much to not cut those corners, uh, you, you start to worry a little bit. You start to think, well, maybe those regulations do matter. Yeah, it's like you have a regulation in place that makes you to tra- track every defective part. Mm-hmm. And then 50s go missing. I wonder where they went. Yeah, and you, I wonder why you weren't tracking them. Maybe because you wanted to boost the profits a little bit. Uh huh. And you not have to spend money on you that. You have a whistleblower coming out and saying that production schedules are so tight that workers are just not doing things properly. And with the door it's his issue. His job, by the way. <laughs> his job, his whole thing is to make sure that they're doing these things right. The door issue was because I think when they were doing maintenance on that uh, 747 Max, they just didn't put bolts back on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They left four bolts off. And then that had been a problem in other Boeings that they looked through and investigated, showing that bolts were not fitted properly, fasteners are not fastening properly, things that are supposed to have very tight junctions between them are not tight, very loose. Again, panels are flying off left yeah. and right. It's like what's com- going on. It's like comedically bad. You know yeah. what I mean? Like this is like a, a comedic example of why the short term profit mindset that is from capitalism is just really bad because shit like this happens. And it's interesting because this started happening after a merger with like some other company and mm-hmm. like new leadership had taken over and decided we're going to we're going to cut some corners. I think the guy the guy who took over Boeing, the CEO, had a slogan that was more for less. What the fuck are we doing, dog? <laughs> what the fuck are we doing? Great. And pursued aggressive cost cutting. A lot of these like defective parts and parts not fitting together issues are because Boeing was subcontracting subcontractors who were subcontracting who were subcontracting. Mm-hmm. Kind of like how Nestle uh, subcontracts their way into wa- slavery. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> great American tradition of slavery. It's, Come on. It's, it's not quite that bad, but these subcontractors are working together and these parts have to be meticulously tooled Mm. meticulously put together you're not able to coordinate that across so many different companies that's just not something that's gonna happen did you see that there was um another boeing plane issue i think it was with the the pilot seat Um, oh something had there was i don't know something was wrong with the pilot seat i'm not an engineer and it like slid forward while he was flying the plane yo and that caused the controls to push up and the plane just did like a nose dive nobody died or anything but it's just like you know one of those things that is really bad yeah one of those things that's kind of minor but can't happen (laughs) yeah yeah. (laughs) imagine that happens on descent yeah. On landing, oh, I'm about to hit the strip, and then you just nose dive in. Come on, man! It's, it's over at that point. Yeah, <laughs> it's like an, we're lucky that major accidents haven't happened yet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's dumb. Another massive claim that John has been making was that they were receiving substandard oxygen system from suppliers that had a failure rate of 25 <laughs> percent, meaning that about one in four masks would not deploy in the air should they need to. Nice. That's crazy, bro. Seems uh good and and standard 25 mm. percent that, that that's wild put put on your own mask before you put on others you're not even got you don't even have one yeah run a t-test on that shit test for <laughs> significance you know hell what i'm saying yeah, come on yeah the p was not low the p was <laughs> not, not, not low oh my high. goodness but anyway he's made all these claims he's been building this case for seven years numerous faa investigations into boeing have corroborated claims that he has made mm-hmm. and i think other independent research has also corroborated the whistles that he's blown mm-hmm Fast forward to last week, John was in South Carolina conducting legal interviews for this case. Notably, his lawyers and family said that he was so geeked to finally have his Mm -hmm. day in court. He was excited that Boeing would finally see justice or he would have a chance so federal regulators could step in and make Boeing see justice, Mm -hmm. make these things be right because people's lives are in danger. Yeah, Man, Boeing's lawyers were able to cross-examine him 
And then the next day, I think on Saturday, he failed to show up to his court so that he could further testify. Cops were sent to the hotel to perform a wellness check, and they found him dead in his car because of a self-inflicted gunshot wound. Now, look, look, this is it's all alleged. Now, everything we were just, you know, it's all alleged. We're not saying anything for sure. But Uh look, there is a great American history dating back a long time of massive corporations Murdering their workers, you know, that are speaking out against them. As, We're making America great again. As you think of America. What, what are some companies you think of? Like I'm thinking, I'm thinking Coca Cola. I'm thinking Ford as well. Ford and Coca Cola. Ford uh, murdering protesting workers in the streets. That's right. Coca Cola notably assassinating union leaders in Latin America. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. <laughs> These are great American companies. Yeah, Boeing, is, one you know, of our great exporters. Right, when people say return to tradition, this is what they're talking this about. This is making America great again. Yeah. This is fucking getting the uppity workers in line. This is America's heyday. Allegedly. Heyday. Allegedly. This course, is their yeah. alleged alleged return to form. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. What can I say? But anyway, yeah. Cops are claiming they com- he committed suicide. Mm-hmm. Boeing is claiming, oh no, oh no, <laughs> yeah. he killed himself. They Isn't said it's a regret. Crazy? They said it's regrettable or something. Isn't that crazy that his lawyer never got to cross examine <laughs> him? Oh, but we did. Yeah. Isn't that crazy? Oh no, he committed suicide. Even though the gun was still in his hand, mm-hmm. he shot himself in the head. The gun stayed in his hand. It didn't go flying. When yeah. You lose all control over your limbs when you shoot yourself. <laughs> and then ABC News came out a couple days after he was initially found dead in his car. And if if there was really any thought, any doubt that he killed himself, and maybe allegedly there were nefarious actions at play. I feel like this dispels it a little bit. ABC News spoke to a family friend of John's who said that he had visited her recently, I think within the last couple of months or year, and told her straight up that if he was ever found dead, not to yeah, believe that is. it was suicide. Bro looked in the camera and said, I am mentally stable. I do uh-huh. not want to kill myself. And then did? Yeah, that's crazy. Come on now. Did when he finally got, he's been waiting seven years for this. He staked his reputation on this. And, and even if what he told his friend isn't true like she just made up the story or whatever uh why would he do this right before he's about to testify something he's been waiting for for like four years at this point seven so oh, he's been waiting seven, seven years. years for that why why he retired in 2017 and i think he talked to bbc in 2019 yeah yeah there's that's come on it doesn't come add on. up man. it doesn't it's happen not like adding that. up the i i you could you could tell me forensics investigations came out that he did in fact kill himself somehow i'm not they were paid off. Man. There's no way, man. <laughs> There's no I, way. I, I like to think I'm not like a super conspiratorial guy, but the evidence here is just not well, evidencing. Of course, like companies have done this in the past, as we've said, yeah. as we said jokingly, but like companies do this. And you it's know like I mean? he made enemies with powerful people. Yeah. Boeing is one of the most powerful companies like in the country. Mm-hmm. Lead exporter. Yeah. Like they're, yeah. they're, they're, the, they're the plain people. The plain people. What else can I say? Yeah. <laughs> Defense contractor. Uh, yeah, like, importantly, yeah. Defense contractors love killing people. And it's crazy because this guy was just doing his job. Literally doing his it's job true. to the letter saying like, hey, something's wrong. <laughs> and he died for it. it but allegedly. It no, yeah, allegedly. Very importantly, allegedly, yeah. I guess. In a, in a video game, yeah. But there's no way. Yeah, it's crazy. There's no way he did. He, there's no way he killed himself. Yeah. It's a bad it's, labor news. It's not like Epstein, where it's like, yeah, Epstein did not kill himself, but it's like as close as you can get without. Yeah, Hillary was, Clinton personally coming in and killing you. I, I, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, was, I was thinking of the Epstein comparison, but I didn't do it because you know this guy's not a bad guy. Yeah, very true. This guy was a good guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but it, it is pretty close to Jeffrey Epstein saying like, "I am in good health. I don't want to hurt myself." Yeah, and that, then Hillary Clinton putting uh, two bullets in the back of his head. They both made enemies of very powerful people. Mm-hmm. And then ended up dead. Like that's crazy. Yeah, right? Jeffrey Epstein knew too much. That's uh, crazy. This guy. Again, not the same as Jeffrey Epstein. Yeah, but uh, this guy had said had something on Boeing and is never going to testify. And I guess just so y'all know, like I am, I'm happy, I'm healthy. I do, I do doubt, not yeah, yeah. want to kill myself, bro. So I, right hand on the on the Bible, whatever. Mm-hmm. I'm chilling. I'm right, chilling. Right hand onto the my copy of right Dune. hand on Dune Two and uh-huh. Dune Messiah. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Right hand on Denis Villeneuve and Timothy yeah. Chalamet, bro. Come on. 
Uh, moving on to some some extras to land to to end us off. This I news think week. so. Um, the only piece of extra news I have, not a full news story, but just something I figured I'd yap about real quick. Word is uh, Haiti. Have you heard about this at all? Oh, there's shit going on in Haiti. There's shit going on in Haiti. If you don't know um, what Haiti is, it's uh, an island nation that's actually backed up against. Uh, uh, it's an island. Half of it is the Dominican Republic. The other half is Haiti. It's about 700 miles off the coast of Florida. Um, and it, a state of emergency was just declared last week after some political violence erupted as the president of Haiti was seeking some international well, former president. Now he stepped down after all okay. this happened. He sought some international help to quell gang violence. Um, this specific instance of violence began because the president announced he would finally hold an election, uh, but not until mid next year. So 2025 Haiti's been without elections for quite a while i think since 2019 parliamentary elections have been getting pushed back and back and back word they keep saying like every year yeah we'll hold elections and then they don't and then they say yeah we'll hold elections and they don't and people are just getting angry about it which is like justifiable which makes sense because you think you live in a democracy yeah. you think you can actually you know have your voices and concerns heard yeah and i think in 2021 or maybe 2022 the president of haiti was assassinated if you remember yes. that um and then Haiti has a long history of violence. It hasn't been a stable country, I don't know, really ever, at least in modern history. One of the leaders uh, known as Barbecue, that's his nickname, uh, oh, wow. For reasons I'll just let you infer, uh -huh. uh, said the president must resign before the president resigned. Uh, he was demanding the president or resign or there will be a civil war that leads to genocide. Oh. Uh, so pretty blatant, trying to do bad things. Yeah. Uh, I hope there's no leftists out there thinking like, yeah, barbecue's going to do the revolution. Oh. Not <laughs> happening. Just bad people. I promise you a guy, a guy named barbecue for reasons I'm sure you can assume. Yeah. Is not the proletariat. Yeah, yeah. Um, there's there's also a lot of misinformation out there. I think some people are saying like Haitians are doing cannibalism right now. I have I feel like I've seen that. I I saw I it on right wing Twitter language, though. Yeah. So I just instantly kind of let it slide. Like that's yeah. not. I it, doubt it. Yeah, it's the same way. They're like, oh well, Native Americans were doing cannibalism, and it's like there's like what three recorded instances of tribes doing uh -huh. it. It might be something like that, but usually when people say that, it's just to dehumanize a population that's already struggling. Absolutely. Right? Um, but political violence, as I said, has long been an issue. In Haiti uh and it unsurprisingly basically all our fault um <laughs> and th the fault of the west right famously uh Haiti was a slave colony um what was the name of the the dude who did the uh the revolution in Haiti the oh. slave revolt can't remember his name it French Toussaint guy? something it's like a French name yeah. yeah 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 uh but there was a slave rebellion uh and they fought for freedom against France uh then afterwards after they freed the colony in Haiti uh, they were indebted to France for the money that France lost oh, in the revolt. Which is insane. Awesome bit of history. Insane. Uh, then in, I think, 1915, uh, it was occupied by the U.S. for two decades uh, because nice. Haiti was indebted to some U.S. banks and they weren't paying out because they were the poorest country on the face of the planet nice. and are still the poorest country in Latin America. Then there was a series of coups after the U.S. left in the 1930s. Um, they had Papa Doc, which is one of the worst dictators really of all time for 20 years. Uh, and they've never really been allowed to recover. They've really been in um, mm -hmm. dire straits for a long time. Also, consistent earthquakes as a sort of island nation. That certainly doesn't help. Uh, and again, poorest nation in Latin America for quite a while. Uh, Haiti really doesn't have too many good things happen to it. Uh -huh. And it's it's uh, usually the fault of the West and how we treat Haiti uh, and countries around it, of course. Not really a, a good deal down there. They also set up, uh, this is recent news, they set up a transitional presidential council in response to the violence. That's the latest. We'll see how that goes if anything changes. Um, but if you're wondering about the sort of conservative response, of course, Florida is the closest state to Haiti. Do get in a the US. decent bit of Haitian immigrants that try to come through. Uh, yeah, there's like, um, I think almost 200,000 uh, people of, of Haitian descent living in Florida yeah. or just like Haitian immigrants, people that were born in Haiti that now live in Florida. Uh, DeSantis is doing basically everything possible to stop Haitian migrants. He said there is the uh, there is a, quote, possibility of invasion. As if, like, Haitian gangs are going to, like, do D-Day on Florida shores. Well, I did see a video, I think, from a press conference that DeSantis had where he's like, yeah, we 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 just seized a ship of Haitians trying to come through. He might have called them, like, Haitian rebels or some shit yeah, yeah. trying to come through. And we seized, like, drugs and something else and night vision goggles in their boat. Yeah, okay, I've, I've seen that claim, too, but I haven't been able to find, like, any evidence outside of DeSantis just saying Oh, I it. completely doubt it. I, yeah. I do not believe a goddamn word that he said. Especially, yeah. but he's trying so hard to be a border state. 
Like yeah, yeah, in the same yeah. way that Texas is a border state, he's got to be making it up. Like I'm sure it was a boat of people who maybe paid a guy to try to get them across the the ocean yeah. to get to Florida, much like how people pay coyotes to get them across the border. And they probably had weapons because like countries in political turmoil. Exactly. <laughs> like they're trying to get out. They probably had weapons because they were worried about, I don't know, other pirates trying yeah. to get to them or yeah. some bullshit. Like yeah. if they did have weapons. Yeah. Yeah. And like that, even that doesn't really pass the smell test because usually when – uh, there's political turmoil in a country. The people fleeing aren't the ones trying to seize control of the country. Yes. And it's the gangs that I think outnumber the police at this point in <laughs> Haiti. They're the ones kind of trying to seize political control, right? The barbecue guy yeah. trying to seize political control. I don't know why people of like uh, in his realm would leave to Florida that doesn't really make, like they're not trying to invade the United States and take over our government. I promise you Haitians are not coming coming through the southern border in Florida with night vision goggles like a fucking Navy SEAL ready yeah. to invade yeah. Miami Beach during spring break. It's not happening. It's not going on. There also straight up hasn't been an influx of migrants from Haiti yet, right? Like yeah. every every couple of years we'll get an influx of an influx of well, migrants notably, because of various things. Like two years ago we got yeah. that influx that Joe Biden stopped. Yeah, and then we got that crazy image of a um a the border guy, patrol officer on a horse with a whip, with a whip. Yep. yeah insane yeah crazy image um but yeah every few years we'll have like an influx of haitian migrants this isn't happening yet it might country sort of in disarray maybe we can expect it but oftentimes the people fleeing political violence and gang violence certainly are the ones trying to get away yeah the, they're not the ones doing the gang violence the, why it, would they leave if they're just, doing it doesn't make sense like you said the guys who are actively trying to seize power are not going to try seizing power from miami yeah they are going to stay in haiti and fight whoever is there right now and mm -hmm. it's just civilians who are here quite literally definitionally seeking asylum yeah they are yes. fleeing political violence in their homeland and trying to come here yeah. for hopes of a better future and or just hopes of safety yeah yeah and, like, we shouldn't be surprised when this happens, right? Like, we, we talk about it when we talk about um, any sort of influx of migrants or just immigration in general. Mm -hmm. We need to look at the material conditions that are motivating people to flee a place like Haiti or Guatemala or, you know, whatever, Nicaragua, whatever other country we're talking about. And oftentimes, those material conditions are a direct result of U.S. intervention or intervention from another mm -hmm. country, which is certainly the case with a country like Haiti. Um, and if we want to fix that, then we got to fix the country. Uh, so much damage has been done to Haiti though i wouldn't even know where to begin oh, but the absolutely. point is that we need to treat people that are fleeing asylum seekers with um passion like they're kindness. human beings yeah like they're human <laughs> beings they are i would argue I, yes I, <laughs> yeah. I think you can make a really good case you could yeah but wouldn't convince desantis speaking of fundamentally changing countries mm -hmm. speaking of maybe doing things in other countries that would change them uh Chuck Schumer, mm, okay. our 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 boy in the ha in the Senate, yeah, yeah. Uh, went on record. I think it was earlier this week, and said that they need to hold elections in Israel to oust Netanyahu. Oh my God, Good. Coop Schumer, Coop <laughs> Schumer, coming through, brother. I'll do you one better. Hey, I'll do you one I, better. Look, I shit on U.S. imperialism, but sometimes doing a coup is good. <laughs> okay? Nothing is wholly bad. Exactly. <laughs> Nothing is wholly bad. Sometimes coups, you know, they can be argued to be necessary. Yeah, I, look. I, if we're if there if there was ever a reason for the U.S. to run election interference on another country, it's in Israel. It, that's what I'm saying. It is it is to stop a genocide. Dare I say that that would make a good thing? Mm -hmm. Ku Schumer out here yeah. saying we need to get Netanyahu out, and then Joe Biden agreed. Yeah, and to be clear, like this is making America great again. That's what I'm in, saying. In our heyday as an empire, we were rigging elections for other countries all across the world. <laughs> yeah, I'm all I'm saying is if we if we can stop, I don't know them in like Iraq from having mm -hmm. their socialist revolution. Why can't we stop them in Israel from? having their genocidal revolution like yeah, please <laughs> please dare, i'm begging at this point come on man ku schumer oh ku my schumer god going crazy out here and joe biden didn't like push back which was dope i oh guess oh my god ku a biden? stretch and a netanyahu was very upset yeah, I Netanyahu can imagine, yeah. was very mad because right now we have to consider Netanyahu is not popular in Israel right yeah, now. Yeah, yeah. He is ultra nationalist. He people don't like him. If he were to run an election right now, one, it would stop the war for at mm -hmm. least six months while the election proceeds, and he would lose. Oh yeah, he would lose. That would be great. Yeah, that'd be fantastic. Both of those things. It's not like, uh, like you know, George Bush had that um, spike in support after nine eleven. Yeah, I, that would not be the case. He might have Netanyahu might have had like a rally around the flag effect. In like the weeks after, but at this point, 
people don't like him. People are very upset everywhere at yeah. this guy, which is, you know, just another reason why it's like, why can't you just put your foot down and stop selling them weapons? Mm-hmm. But whatever. Yeah, I well, yeah, and guess. Yeah, the implication is like, okay, you think they should have an election because Netanyahu sucks so much. Why do you keep sending him uh, artillery? Yeah, you, you, <laughs> what are we doing? I, I, you know what? And that's the thing. It's like if you want to maintain this relationship with Israel, this is a relationship with Israel, not Netanyahu. Mm-hmm. You can get that guy out, mm-hmm. and then you can rebuild things very easily. I gotta like. I mean, if we're talking about making America great, I gotta believe the CIA's got something in their arsenal. You, they gotta have like to a, a draft. Uh-huh. You know what I'm saying? They gotta have a draft for like everywhere, mm. everywhere. I'm sure they got like some sleeper agent in Israel somewhere. <laughs> you can speak the words November to him and get him to wake up. <laughs> yeah. Biden Al Ghalib, come on. Biden Al Ghalib, come, come on, on man. man. That'd be crazy. That'd be crazy. But yeah, Ku Schumer out here popping off. Uh, Netanyahu was not a, not happy about that at all. Yeah. He went on to say some fucking bullshit, whatever, while also announcing that he is very much going to invade Rafa. Yeah, I believe it. So that's crazy. That's some news we have uh, to not look During forward Ramadan. to. During Ramadan. That's crazy. Yeah, we have some news to not look forward to these coming weeks. But some good news out of uh, Gaza is the humanitarian pier that Biden mentioned at the State of mm-hmm. the Union was kind of established. Um, a ship was allowed to come in carrying, I want to say, like 200 tons of aid. Oh. And it was distributed not by U.S. soldiers, but by independent, like, URAF workers or whatever. Okay, groups that uh, Netanyahu will call Hamas. Exactly, NGOs that will have one member of Hamas in them. That- so was it like a, a U.S. boat? I'm not sure exactly the details. All I know is that a big-ass fucking boat was allowed to come in. And So then- they built the pier, or they just used the pier? I think they just or something? set it somewhere else on the Anch- beach anchored that shit you know what <laughs> i mean drop that shit on the i'm beach. not exactly sure the logistics of it but either way aid is being dispersed through that and we're continuing with airdrops right now i mean i i guess if it's working you know yeah what I mean? if it's working i kind of wanted it to be like the fucking uss goddamn destroyer <laughs> <laughs> yeah. pulling up and scaring israel but whatever no biden doesn't want to do that but maybe they'll do a coup maybe just like a 48 hour media blackout in israel maybe nobody can, nothing can get in <laughs> nothing can get out it's like shibuya <laughs> no no information traveling Biden's gonna fucking drop his veil over <laughs> yeah. tel aviv and then and then media comes back up two days and netanyahu like, who's netanyahu who's, what, do you, what, do you Net, what are you talking about just some guy that kind of vaguely looks like him appears you mean on that screen. guy that was in his car that- <laughs> <laughs> yeah. i don't know what happened it's really Ooh, sad what are you talking about this news to me yeah news yeah. to me man I, I, the cia has done it before so many times. So Brett. many They're times. They're good at it. And dare I say, they haven't been flexing that muscle. Yeah, I know. What happened to being the most powerful nation in the world? What happened to just cooing any and everyone everywhere? This is when we need Henry Kissinger. Yeah. Well, why can't we fucking hire a far right militant group in Israel to fucking do a coup? Like, <laughs> well, we do they are else? the far right. The more far right militant group it's is the government. because we can't get any further. We yeah. can't go any further right. That's why we can't get them out of there. Yeah, no, the far right people are very pleased. They don't want to do a coup. <laughs> They're actually like, this is sick. The far right people are in the IDF. <laughs> there's no one it's for just, us to hire for no a coup. one else to pander. Yeah. Oh my God. That's why it is. I get it now. Mm-hmm. It's all clear. Um, I guess in other news, Biden came through and put sanctions on two like groups of settlements in the West Bank, which is an unprecedented move. Previously, we've only ever sanctioned individuals in the West mm. Bank, not entire like enclaves. So that's cool. But what does that do? Like I don't they, know. They live in Israel. I, they I can't don't buy know. stuff in the U.S. Oh, or no, something? you can't import fucking lace, yeah. personally. Whatever. I, I don't really know what that does to them. Yeah, that's I mean, true. I guess it's good, you know, unprecedented sure step in the right direction, but, like, bars in hell, you know? The bars in hell. The, I feel like the bar, very realistically, is that just stop selling weapons to mm-hmm. the people you say you don't like. Easiest man. thing to do. Especially, especially like, for shit they're doing in the West Bank, because, like, Hamas isn't even there. Yeah. And that's wholly a Gaza thing. Especially, especially if you say, if you're Biden and you go on MSNBC and you say invading so like rafa is a is a red line mm-hmm. and now yahoo says i'm gonna do it anyway dog or when biden explicitly says his goal is a two-state solution and netanyahu explicitly says that's never going to happen yeah why are you still selling bombs and shit like, like clearly we're at an impasse here. <laughs> <laughs> what, what negotiations could possibly work this out yeah you're not winning him over with your word oh he has god. oh my god man gotta stop Gotta, gotta stop. stop. And Schumer's got the right idea. Oh, yeah. Ku Schumer, come Koo on. Schumer. Put him in charge of the CIA. Oh, my God. Give him a three-letter organization to go crazy with. Come yeah. on now. Speaking of uh, 
lettered organizations. Mm-hmm. I have a four letter organization that I really love. Yeah. H I T O B. Oh, Come best on. One. And I have to thank the people that keep the lights on here in mm-hmm. the studio. Our taxpayers, our constituents. Our constituents, the people that make me feel like I have rich parents that mm-hmm. just give me money so I can buy things that aren't bills. Maybe one day this list will get long enough so we can do a coup in a foreign country. Yeah, maybe we could rally enough support uh-huh. to be able to just take somewhere over. Yeah, we could be like a small police department. Um, yeah. Maybe we could train alongside Israel and the NYPD. Yes. And then use that power against them. Excellent. Uh-huh. And then the acorn can fall on my car and I'm here, I'm here. <laughs> I'm oh my freaking gosh. out, dog. I'm freaking out. I'm freaking out. Anyway, special thanks to, again, the people that keep the lights on, Caden Kraut. Lord Tyler Radiant, Chris the Postman, Christy Beck, 40% Spite, Dylan B., Andrew Harris, Mike Chaplinski, Mattias T., Omar Zuno, Clayton LaFed, Mark Yeager, Kaz, Caleb Joy, Rich Toro, Tari, Gavin Mayer, Maldonado, Hunter W., Fergalaki, Max Vesquez, Jacob Rogers, Colton Mooberry, Fixer Punk, Jim Egbers, Jeff Muzzy, Bagel Burrito, Cincy Alex, Joe Stenstrom, Adrian Sandoval, Chloe Sam 601, Colleen Cuts, Veryuk, Jennifer DeVoe, Big Bird Titty, Crawfishing, Beneth Bennington III, Alexia Benati, Nietzsche, Big Booty Beatdown, Sam Maloney, Two-Headed Boy, Ben Shapiro's Boyfriend, Jonathan Cassis, Luke O'Shea, Cucker Tarlson, Danielle Jackson, The Word of Microsoft, Jennifer Science, Aaron and His Gundam Gundams, Darth Father, Tailored for Content, Corey Chambers, Sewer Snack, L.E.N., Devin Hatchard, Retro Mondo, Emma the Dude Slayer, Veronica a.k.a. V, Raxon, Ash Smith the Grottler, Flower Clown, Beetlebugs, Murder in a Trench Coat, <laughs> Lonnie Rogers, Slavic and Sapphic, Casey Lynn Kelly, Snake Eyes and Hope of Giants, A.K. Ghana, Quana, Don, Zach Lantian, Info Russell, Austin Greif, Marcus Corbett, Caleb Roper, Taylor Rensock, Ishi Teddy, Cami, Tylan Freeman, Steak Daddy, Tay Tay, Isaac Hodges, Madeline C, Pab the Pab 69, Kayla Lowe, Anna Valenic, Eduardo Diaz, Casey C, Say Yes to West, August, Particular Pickman, Sir Capalot, Jeff Signs, Howard the Duck, Brennan is Egg, JR, Drew Batchilder, Froggy Gumdrop, Zen doing their best. Jackie Boy, Shameless, Coherent Babbles, Sasha, MJ is Sharp, Michaela Muncy, The Wallace 3000, Southwest Socialism, Jared Finch, Evil Vegan, Tactical Snowflake, Son of Ander, Vanilla Bryce, Willie Swags, Chris E, Kishan Lala, Amanda R, Hanky Panky, Tyler J, Damian Blues, Real Nurse RN, Ashley White, Dick Cheney and Three Inch Heels, Lalo Valesco, Particulon, Memfrez, Gorgeous Girl Mukes, Classified Jones, and my mom. Thank you all so much for supporting the show on Patreon. We couldn't do it without you. And maybe one day we can implant a prophecy in a foreign population that makes them think, I'm the second coming of Christ. Exactly. Maybe we could get you all to, you know, spread the gospel the Sunday sermon and get people to think that we're out here, you know, literally being the mouths of God. Yeah, the voice from the outer world. That's me. (laughs) Exactly. That's me. (laughs) Listen, okay. See you guys next week. Have a great week.